My passion is surf photography. Ever since I was a young boy, I would have a map on the wall of the world and I was, had big dreams about where I could go in the world. And those dreams were just, you know, pipe dreams at the time, but it was always something that I was kind of working towards. And I thought, man, if there's something I could do here that would let me travel. And I mean, what a blessing that surf photography was that vehicle. It was something I was so passionate about. I was a surfer myself, I loved the ocean, but then there was opportunity to start to travel. And uh, man, the first time I got to do a trip overseas was to Indonesia and I just, it blew my mind that I was actually doing this thing that I loved. And since then I've seen so, so many incredible places and I've met so many incredible people. And that has all been through my passion, which was surf photography. I think in any career and lifestyle choice we make in life, there are those things of like being certain and then uncertainty. In the world of surf photography, you know, as a young person, I lived in a very small part of Cape Town and I had to try and make it in the big world of A, the surf magazines, for example, or the brands, and even on the, the world surfing tour. And you know, there's a definitely a lot of moments where you get knocked down and uh, you need to work through those things. And often I think working through those things is where you really build character and you build yourself in your career. You know, you're like, okay, well, this didn't shake me. I'm gonna get even more of a bit of a foundation here. And it does, it does add to who you're gonna be as a, as a person in your career. I found my passion during my high school years. I bought a little Instamatic camera. It was very cheap at the time, but I used to take photographs of my mates surfing. And on the Monday morning after the weekend, we'd sell those shots for like, you know, five, 10 rand a pop and uh, that's kind of how I got into it. There was such a sense of like uh, reward and uh, meaning behind getting these images and then you know, seeing the stoke that it brought my friends. I think that was the real hook. It was like people really, really enjoyed this and uh, they got so much from it. In my career, it's always been that. It's been not so much about the money. If I can do a job that I A, love and B, somebody can get something a lot more out of it, I'd rather do that than, and I've always said to people, if you're gonna quote a client for the first time, for example, it's so important to rather almost say, well, what can you guys afford? I'll fit in with that and let's build a relationship here. I've definitely constructed my career around my passion from the get-go and it's still something that it's evolving all the time. I live in a place called Cormicky, you know, in Cape Town and that was a choice because there was good surf there and I wanted to surf and take great surf photographs. So from the place that I lived to my wife, she was a surfer herself and I wanted to marry somebody who understood surfing and understood photography. Oh, Everyone I can sit there on couch in the evening and see like, so beautiful. Because her family was always looking through those palm trees at Boneyards. Uh, it's a cool, constant day-to-day -day connection to what I love most and then taking a step back and okay, then how does the career fit into that? We all gifted and talented in something, you know, so it's important just to keep trying to find out what that is. I remember the time where my dad was hopeful that I'd become a doctor like he was, and I was like so not wanting that. And it takes a big step to commit to something that's new and that really is your passion. It does take some time, you know, you look at a lot of young people and they get two, three years, oh, I don't know what, I, what I'm supposed to do, and you kind of can't find yourself. Um, you know, definitely don't feel like you're lost there and everybody goes through that. A mentor is something I think everybody should definitely have in their life and as somebody that you look up to and ask questions to, you know, and uh, for me there was a guy called John Callahan. He's an American and he needed a water photographer at the time to join him on a trip to Indonesia. He had seen some of my photographs in the local surfing magazine called Zigzag and he was like, listen, I need somebody who can shoot specifically in the water. I'll do all the land stuff and, uh, you know, would you be keen? I mean, she's almost fell over, I was so keen. And that sparked this incredible relationship and he wasn't actively trying to mentor me, but for me it was the most incredible relationship. I think the key thing with a mentor is learning how to make your passion kind of like a business, if I can say that, um, because you need to know how is this gonna actually pay your bills at the end of the day. That's where I, what I learned a lot from him was how to manage one's business and uh, you know take one's passion and actually make it pay for you. One bit of advice I can give is never ever turn down the smallest of jobs because those little jobs will add up and that's also where you really grow and develop one's skill in whatever field you're in. For me, as a water photographer, I got a name for shooting these wide angle images on a fisheye lens. And very quickly within the first few years, a lot of interior design companies were asking me to shoot these wide angle images of their, you know, of their spaces and their interiors. And I would have never got that name in the interior design world had I just directly gone into that. So because I specialized in this thing called surf photography, which was quite niche, um, I just stick, stuck with what I was passionate about and people got to know of me through that. That boat was like lying in the intercom 
and some like sketchy ocean viewers just like put a hole in and they just like drowned it and it's like I was like that's not safe so we went and retrieved it and it's like the perfect sandpit. Now in the work that I do as a surf photographer you know you get your day-to-day -day local stuff where you meet up with a surfer and you're going down to a certain surf spot in, in your know, hometown. For me I specialize in water photography so it's a very much putting a camera into a water housing um, obviously making sure it's fully sealed and um, you can access all your kind of uh, controls from the outside and that's what's great because then you can get into the water and you, you might want to change some sort of settings on the controls and then yeah, I pretty much swim out and I'm trying to get the best possible photographs of these surfers in action. Um, sometimes there's an element of the lifestyle and the beauty of surfing um, involved in that and uh, yeah it's just a beautiful symbiosis once again I think people miss the fact that surf photographers it's not just us grabbing a shot it's a very key relationship between surfer and photographer because I need them to do as much as I do pretty much and I need to watch their body language and we talk about okay let's try and get that shot and it's a very very much of a 50 50 relationship I had a very good friend of mine Shane Cottrell and he was able to do things in waves and I could just predict the smallest bit of body movement and know exactly, okay, he's gonna do that and I'd get a, a shot that I wouldn't get with somebody else. And he knew he could get that close to me and I wouldn't kind of get in the way or I might get hit. So those relationships and, and having somebody special that you work with in whatever field you do, it's very important to have that play off. There's definitely moments when you're uncertain. You know, it took a long time, for example, for my mom to think that this is something that I was gonna be good at. And when she saw that first magazine cover, it was like, oh wow, he's actually doing something that is A, paying the bills, but B, that he's really good at. And I think it's important to get those little wins and those little uh, small accolades or whatever you want to call them. And that really kind of helps build yourself and look, okay, I'm going to get through those uncertain times. Yeah, you know, getting to this point in my career, 20, 20 plus years down the line, it, it is everything I hoped it would be and a bit more. I'm almost like trying to pull on the reins and push the brakes, so to speak, you know, like the first 10 years, you're just kind of going for somewhere. And then when you, when you finally get to a certain point in your career, you realize, hold on, some of those big dreams aren't as important. It's weird, like I find as a family person, like my family and my passion, my career, everything needs to fit into a certain priority system, you know, and I find like a very good sweet spot there. And now I really want to hold those reins. I don't want life to just disappear. So I'm really enjoying the now and you do get to a place of real meaning and, and substance. And now it's almost as much as sharing that with my family and those around me as it is just me chasing my own career.